Developed by Niels Bohr in 1928, the principle of complementarity is a way to quantify the particle wave duality of physical objects. Complementarity dictates that the wave and particle properties of matter and radiation cannot be observed simultaneously beyond this inequality. The inequality associated with the principle of complementarity, as seen here, k squared plus v squared is less than or equal to 1, is dependent upon two parameters. Firstly, we have our variable k, the which way information that can be used to quantify how much is known about the path that the particle took. Secondly, there is our variable v, which is the visibility. The visibility of the path refers to how clearly we can observe wave interference. It is defined by the variation of intensities that manifest as the wave is observed. Both of these variables can be measured and calculated and always fall within 0 and 1, with 0 implying complete uncertainty about one of the parameters, and 1 meaning that information regarding that parameter is complete. There are a few remarkable consequences of this principle. By the nature of this inequality, the sum of the squares of these two parameters will never be able to exceed 1 in order for this inequality to be preserved. Furthermore, the more that is known about one aspect of matter, the less that can be observed regarding the other. For example, high visibility always leads to low wishway information. In an extreme case of this, an experiment that could record complete visibility information would always fail to capture any which way information and vice versa. There is no known exception to the principle of complementarity, but there is an alleged violation to this principle in the famous Afshar experiment. Sharir Afshar created an experiment based on Thomas Young's double slit experiment in 2001. In Young's experiment, it is shown that you cannot observe both wave and particle properties of an object simultaneously. Afshar, however, shows through his experiment that the principle of complementarity could be violated. In a version of his experiment, a single photon goes through a beam slitter, as seen in the figure. The two beams eventually cross, interfere, and then diverge to corresponding single photon detectors. When a set of wires is placed at the center of the beam intersection, where it is assumed that there is destructive interference, the wires appear to have a negligible impact on the photons. Because the rate of photon count was similar to the case with the wires removed, it is implied that there are regions of fully destructive interference. Afshar et al. assumed that the visibility V is 1. It was also assumed that the photons maintain their trajectory and that the wires had no effect on them, which results in high which-way information where k equals 1. This was the main observation of Afshar et al. as shown in the animation. A wire can be scanned across the beam intersection as shown in the figure. Results from this experiment show that when the wire is at the center of bright fringes, the photon flow is cut by as much as 12%. This can be seen in the change of photon flux graph. When the wire is at the center of a dark fringe, the graph shows no change of photon flow as compared with the case when there is no wire. When one of the beams is blocked, there is interference. When the wire is at the very center of the beam, it only decreases the beam by about 6% due to wire diffraction. From the 6% decrease of photons, half are absorbed by the wire while half are diffracted. Out of the diffracted photons, most fall within a small cone. Very few diffracted photons end up at the wrong detector. Therefore, the path information is still close to one. When both beams are on and the wire is at the center of a dark fringe, wire diffraction effects are far smaller than with a single beam. The path information K is very close to one. Thus, in the Afshar experiment, we seem to have that k squared plus v squared is about 2, resulting in a paradox since it violates the inequality greatly. The Afshar experiment paradox has profound consequences as it jeopardizes the underlying principles of quantum mechanics. Thus, many physicists have proposed solutions to the Afshar paradox. However, many of these are rushed and incorrect. We show below that quantum field theory can explain the Afshar experiment paradox. Because the wire is in a dark fringe, photons will be deflected around a wire. 
which is done through the emission and absorption of virtual particles. As the real photon approaches the wire, a charged particle in the wire emits a virtual photon. The real photon is absorbed by a virtual electron, and shortly after, so is the virtual photon. This electron then re-emits a real photon, with a new momentum and a virtual photon is emitted back to the wire. The necessary momentum for momentum conservation is provided by the wire in the entire setup. This process is known as quantum scattering. However, this process only describes the mechanism for photon deflection around the wire. We note that right after the photon is deflected around the wire, the photon faces a two-state quantum system. The two states are the two momenta that correspond to the two beams, each directed to an end detector. These two states are equally likely. We note that photons that go near the wire avoid a wire, resulting in high visibility, where V equals 1. However, these photons have a 50-50 chance to take momentum 1 along beam 1, or momentum 2 along beam 2. Since both states are equally likely to happen, the past information of particles are erased, which in turn makes k equal 0. Therefore, the complementarity inequality, k squared plus v squared is less than or equals to 1, is not violated. In the case when a photon passes far from the wire, the photon has full past information of a particle, where k equals 1. However, there is no visibility, where v equals 0. Since far from the wire, there are no virtual particles to deflect the photon away from the dark fringe. Therefore, there is no violation of the complementarity inequality in this case either. When many wires are placed at the beam intersection at the presumed dark fringes, we have the Asher experiment set up. However, here too, quantum field theory solves the mystery.